part of part of this stability here. As you see it working quicker and quicker and quicker, you're going to become more and more certain, more and more stable about the fact that you can manifest your own reality, that you already are, and you can get better and better at it. And this is the, the steering wheel, more or less, for these four little things right here. Are there questions about that? Anybody got any questions about this? Yes? Yeah, what is being the future? Being the future. Well, you're being in the present, what we consider the present, although, you know, everything's happening all at the same time. Future, the past, all that, right? Well, out of all the potentiality of what could happen in the next few moments, what's the most likely thing to happen? What you intend. This has been the way it's been your whole entire life. From your first breath, you have intended your next one, haven't you? You know that we breathe 21,600 times a day? So there's 21,600 intentions that showed up in your life every day. Yeah, we're all, nobody looks like they're starving. Everybody has intended to eat a meal a day at least, right? And that showed up. What most shows up in your life is what you intend. And that's true for everybody. Up until, and maybe even including, when you die. So what we're saying is that faster and faster, what you intend is going to show up, and more and more exactly what you intend. This trend is already going on. I mean, the whole deal of life is picking what you want to pay attention to, right? You pick what you want to pay attention to. Well, 200 years ago, there was a certain amount of things you could pay attention to. Now, there's, I mean, not just natural things to pay attention to, but there's all the media, all the different kinds of media presentations that you can pay attention to. You've got more and more choice of more and more fine-tuned intention of what you're going to pay attention to. And it's going to continue and continue. So we have just a vista of more and more and more possibility. And the only thing that would hold you back from being able to participate fully in the whole of this is your integrity. When your integrity goes out, then you're not paying attention to the present moment. You can't really have an intention from that point, and you're disconnected from source. So ethics and integrity are the absolute key. <clears throat> of our presentation by Ian Lungle on the Mayan calendar. Let's welcome Ian back. It's quite wonderful that you have this center made available to all of us. Thank you very much. Uh, during the break, we had a couple of questions, and I was going to have the people ask those questions again on tape. So, uh, one of the questions from over here. And what was the question again? Was the question is where did the Maya people get? the information from to begin with. Okay, where did the Mayan people get this information to begin with? Well, uh, we don't precisely know. Uh, we have their own legends, is all we really know about it, and that in their legends they say that a person, or a god, by the name of Itzamna, came down to the Mayan people and delivered information about language, writing, mathematics, and the calendar. So they received this information as a gift. Where Itzamna came from and where he went, we don't really know. And frankly, it's none of our business. Where they got it. It's much more important what we do with the information now. They have sacrificed generations to hold this information. While the Catholics and the Jesuits and the corporate powers that be have pummeled the Mayan civilization. While their, their books and knowledges have been destroyed by the Catholic Church, they held this information as best they could. There are 8 million Maya still living in Central America. A very low percentage of them with any knowledge of their own culture. 
very small percentage actually still follow the calendar and, and, and follow traditional ways. <coughs> yeah, it's been quite a, quite a journey for them. But they have held this information and passed it forward to us. We have added to their information with all the science that we now have and has come uh, more full circle. Or we're, we're now receiving back the information, some of it, that the Maya had probably accumulated but was burned by the Catholics. So, to answer that question. And then there was another question. Of, I believe the question was, how much room did it take on the stone at Koba to present all this information? And there's a huge stone there, the calendar stone is what we call it, and it's in the Grotto of Kings. And the stone stands, oh, probably 12 feet high. It's covered with glyphs. And one side of that 12 foot high monument is uh, a bunch of Mayan writing. And all the writing that's on it, all that's there, is just the periods of time. How long was this period of time? How long was that period of time? How long was this period of time? In other words, the structure, what Coleman had done, is filled in with our scientific